Welcome to all of you who are watching online this morning. This will look a little different than our usual service. Pastor Zach and I are on a ministerial retreat at Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset, northern Minnesota. Back in Uppsala, it is Harvest Fest Sunday, and the service is a worship time and concert put on by Sweetwater Revival and all women Southern Gospel Quartet. The name Sweetwater Revival got me thinking a little bit about revival, and so that's what today's message will be about. Let me start with a verse from the Psalms. This is coming from Psalm 85 and verse 6. The psalmist asked God, Will you not yourself revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. I have a pastor friend by the name of Billy Ferg. He pastors a Pentecostal church up in Duluth. He was on a mission trip in an African country, Uganda, if I remember correctly. He was riding in a taxi and he came upon a car accident. And the Holy Spirit said to him, stop and pray for a woman who was involved in that accident. And so he asked the taxi driver to stop. The taxi stopped and Billy got out and he went over to the accident. There were some people gathered around, some people who had come to see if they could be of service and help. And the woman involved in the accident had died. And they told Billy, uh, she's dead. And he said, uh, God told me to come and pray. And they said, uh, don't bother, she's dead. And he said, I know, but God told me to pray. He prayed over the woman and her life returned to her. She was revived. That's what revival means, that life comes back again. In the Christian church, or if you've grown up around Christianity, you've no doubt heard about being saved or delivered or rescued. From sin and, and that's terribly important. We all need that. But at this retreat, we've heard a speaker, David Johnson. He pastored at Church of the Open Door in the Twin Cities for 38 years. He's now retired and he is ministering to pastors and passing on things that he's learned over the course of his ministry. And he said, we need to think even beyond salvation because sometimes salvation can mean only saying the right words, that we place our trust in Christ, which is terribly important. Those words do mean a great deal. But he says, said, that doesn't guarantee that we will have life. We need to have the life of the Holy Spirit in us. And that comes from God through Jesus Christ through our trust in Him, yes. David Johnson said, when God was creating the world and He created the first man, Adam, He breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and that's when Adam became a living being. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 2 that we are not just in need of rescue, but we're, we're dead. That is, we have no life in us if we are separated from God, if we don't have the life of the Holy Spirit in us. We are, maybe a good way to put it is uh, zombies, the living dead, the walking dead, people walking around looking like we have life, but not really having that life. It is the Holy Spirit, by the way, Spirit, and breath are the same word in Hebrew and in Greek. And if we have the life of the Holy Spirit, if we have His breath, then we really are alive. If we only say the words, that doesn't guarantee that we have life. But if in fact we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, then we have life. Each of us needs to be revived. Each of us 
needs to have new life because of our personal sin and our trespasses. And we can have that just for the asking. It's a very simple prayer that we can pray. God, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm sorry for my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask you to give me that new life that I need so that I can truly be alive and no longer dead. It's not just individuals who need new life, but churches need new life too. Churches can be dead. We've maybe all had the experience or at least know of churches in which uh, there didn't seem to be any life. People going to the churches were going through the motions. People in the churches were doing ministry, but there was no real life, no transformation of lives going on. You can do a lot of pretending. You can do a lot of simulation of life without there being life. When a church has life, there should be evidence of it. There should be fruit of the Spirit. In that church, you should find love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the things that you should see. If you go to a church and you don't see those things, you, you might conclude that the church is dead. It needs to be revived. It needs to have that breath of the Spirit breathe into it. We pray for that. We ask God for that. We invite the Spirit to be with us. And then sometimes a church that has been dead comes back to life. And suddenly everybody knows it. There's something going on there. God is doing something. Lives are transformed and it affects everybody. Not only do churches need new life, but communities need new life. Sometimes a church will hold revival meetings so that people outside the church can experience that new life. And I've heard stories and read stories about churches where God was doing such an amazing work that uh, people were drawn to drive to that church for reasons that they didn't understand. Maybe they were going by on the freeway and, and they turned off inexplicably and went to that church to see what was happening because the Holy Spirit was there and the Holy Spirit was breathing new life into the church and into the people who were coming from the community. Just as there should be evidence of new life in a church, there should be evidence of new life in a community when the Holy Spirit is giving it life. Marriages sometimes are saved. People take an interest in prayer. People take an interest in reading God's Word more than before. There are changes going on in the community. There's a very interesting story about a man named Evans Roberts who led a Welsh revival just in the, at the turn of, from the 1800s to the 1900s. He began to preach with an anointing that uh, was very unusual. And people began to come to faith. And it began to impact the whole community. It was a, a mining community. And um, pit ponies were used to bring uh, coal out of the mines. And the story goes that as the miners were changed and given new life by the Holy Spirit, and this filtered out into the community, uh, the pit ponies who were used to the miners swearing no longer understood what the miners were saying because they weren't using the curse words anymore. <laughs> but an amazing transformation was going through that community. The Holy Spirit can get a hold of an entire community. It can be revived. There can be new life. There can be transformation. There are a lot of signs that accompany revival. Gifts of the Spirit might be manifested. People might begin speaking in languages that they had never 
learned. People might experience healings in response to prayer. But the one true sign that revival is taking place, the one thing that must be there is repentance. That people are sorry for the sins that they've committed, that they really desire to change. Not just saying the words, but living a different life, giving the power to do that by the Holy Spirit. And if the signs and wonders that sometimes accompany a revival become the focus of that revival, God will shut it down. Jesus Christ needs to stay the focus. He needs to be the main thing. And many revivals, which have started out in quite a wonderful way, have been shut down because people lost focus on Christ. Revival is the giving of new life, which only comes through the Holy Spirit. It is more than words. It is the breath of God bringing people back to life. Jesus didn't come and die on the cross and rise again in order to make bad people good. Rather, he came to make dead people alive. Amen.